I welcome you to our session today. Um, today is on the Saturday, the 30th day of July in the year 2022. And uh, this is uh, part of our series uh, of the Wasiliana Hub Effective Mediator Masterclass, our wellness series. And today's topic is me and my mental hygiene with our masterclass leader, Patricia uh, Okech. Karibu sana to this session. My name is Wangari Kabiru, the convener at Wasiliana Hub. We will start off our session with the words of the Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa, Wanchi ya Kenya. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha, tupate na ustawi. Once again, I welcome you to our session today on the Wasiliana Hub Effective uh, Mediator Masterclass, our wellness series on the topic, me and my mental hygiene, with our facilitator, masterclass leader, Patricia Ketch, who is a counseling psychologist and a mediator. Mediator Patricia Ketch, how are you today? And Karibu Sana to our Karibu Sana to uh, the session. Thank you very much. I am well and I'm glad to be here today. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. What is what is in store for us uh, as part of uh, mental hygiene as you um, proceed on? Yes, I think we have had so much about mental health in the past few years. Most of the time we, we, we don't hear about how to keep ourselves healthy when it comes to mental uh, health. So we are going to be going through a little, just a little bit of what it takes to be, to have mental hygiene or to handle mental hygiene. Okay. It's, it's quite interesting that uh, our topic today is on mental hygiene because um, physical hygiene is something that many are conversant with. We mm -hmm. are told, wash your hands, uh, brush your teeth, uh, wear clean clothes, I probably would also say environmental hygiene is something that we are um, highly aware of. Uh, make sure that the space you're in is clean, clean the dishes before you use them. And so it will be quite interesting to now hear mental hygiene. It sounds like um, using, um, you know, power foam soap on, on our mental. And so looking forward to the yes. session. So Karibu Sana and uh, thank yes. you for this session. Welcome. Okay. Please okay. proceed. Thank you. So I, I'll start off by um, just telling us what mental health is, the definition. And I know we have had different definitions over the time, but today I want to say that mental health refers to our cognitive, behavioral, and emotional well-being. It is all about uh, how people think, feel, and behave. And uh, sometimes when we hear the term mental health, for us, it would seem like it means mental disorder. And that's what we are trying to get out of today. And um, one who is healthy mentally, um, we can also uh, give this as a definition. One who is ment uh, mentally healthy would have the following, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and uh, self-control. And that comes from Galatians, Galatians chapter five. It gives us this as a mental health definition. Um, I thought it would be wise for us to know what hygiene means because it's rarely put together with mental, but hygiene is a series of practices performed to observe health. And according to WHO, this hygiene refers to conditions and practices that help to maintain health and prevent the spread of disease. Um, so sometimes people equate hygiene with cleanliness, uh, but hygiene is very broad. It is that personal habit and that personal habit choices that we do frequently, like showering, bathing, washing our hands, maybe making sure our nails are clean, the house is clean, all those surfaces we have in the house are also clean. 
And even like you have mentioned, the, the environment where we are living is clean. That would be hygiene. And rarely do we use that with mental hygiene. So today we look at mental hygiene as, um, is a care that we give to ourselves. That mental hygiene is what we give to ourselves to avoid having mental disorder. Remember hygiene is for, uh, when we talk about hygiene, generally we think of disease, but also here mental, health, mental hygiene would be how we avoid to have mental health issues, mental health disorders. So it encompasses anything that we do to stay healthy. And for us to go through this, we shall look at two areas, that is promotion of positive mental health and mental health issues prevention. Um, some conditions that influence mental health are, uh, some of them are listed here that like, it will inf influence both positively and negatively, interpersonal health, community dynamics, housing, uh, social support, employment opportunities, work and school conditions. And um, there are many others, there are many, many others that, that uh, are other conditions and factors that we can look at. So I said, we are going to look at mental health promotion and prevention. So let's start with promotion. Promotion of positive mental health. It is defined as intervening to optimize positive mental health. And this is done by addressing the determinants of positive mental health uh, before a specific mental health problem has been uh, identified. And uh, I've listed some of the determinants above uh, that, that, that we need to, to look at when we are dealing with mental uh, promotion of the positive mental health. And the ultimate game, goal of this is usually to improve the positive mental health. And then the promotion of mental health and well-being may, may, may often also be just called mental health promotion. So just the change of words, you'll find sometimes people will talk about promotion of positive mental health or mental health promotion. And this will still focus on increasing social and emotional well-being and uh, the quality of health. Um, the initiatives here can target an entire population, groups of people or individuals and can occur in any setting. We are going to focus on ourselves today, me and my uh, mental health. So why do we promote mental, uh, positive mental health? We promote this because uh, good mental health matters, is fundamental in our sense of well-being. Without it, it's harder to stay healthy and to live as long and as well as we can. Mental health promotion attempts to encourage and increase protective factors and healthy behaviors that can help prevent the onset of any diagnosable mental disorder and reduce risk factors that can lead to the development of a mental disorder. So when we are looking at the promotion of positive mental health, we are looking at the well-being of, of a person. We are looking at um, how to increase the protective factors that are there and how to reduce the risks of the factors that bring a uh, mental disorder. The ways that we promote uh, positive mental health one of them is um, connect with people. Um, we find that when we connect with people and we have good relationships that are that with, with people, this actually promotes mental well-being. So that they can be, you know, they can help us to sense to have a sense of belonging and self-worth. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to share positive experiences and provide emotional support and allow you to support others. So just connecting with others is very important. We saw how it was important, especially during the COVID time, how sometimes just not being able to be with people would cause uh, uh, people to withdraw, to start feeling lonely and their mental well-being was affected in that way. 
Um, the second one is being active. Being active um, is not only great for your physical health, you know, the fitness, you feel nice, you're, you're able to move, but we see it also because it raises self-esteem and it helps us to set goals or challenges to achieve them. Uh, especially when it is the physical uh, ones, you know, being active. And I walk two kilometers today. Yesterday I walked one. Could I increase it to maybe three? Could I climb a hill? So just giving us, giving those challenges and achieving them when we are active, climb a mountain, climb a hill, it helps us. And uh, this also causes uh, chemicals in our brains to, to work well. Because when we, we have chemicals that bring excitement, but that bring good thoughts, uh, by doing those exercises, we activate those chemicals. Um, we can learn new skills. Uh, some of those new skills that we learn help us to challenge ourselves also mentally. So um, we learn those new skills. It will boost our self-confidence and raise self-esteem. Um, it will help us to build a sense of purpose. It will also help us to connect with others. And um, you, you know, even if you like to do, if you don't have enough time probably and you want to do things, then create that little time. And, and, and there are challenges like uh, learning mu new music, how to play music, how to play an instrument, how to knit, how to stitch, get, get to do some skill that will challenge us and will be able to help us to have a good mental health. And then give to others. We give to others in the form of uh, uh, kindness, showing kindness to others. And, and, and we see that when we show kindness to others, it helps us mentally because it creates positive feelings and a sense of reward just because you've helped someone you have even given them uh helped them climb a stair given them some unga because you have one packet and you've shared with them uh it gives us a self uh, feeling of purpose and self-worth it also helps us to connect with other people because when we go out we uh, we easily connect with other people um it could also be uh, acts of kindness towards others or maybe a larger way of volunteering with others within a local community. And we see this happening when we, we help, uh, mostly in Kenya, I see us helping old age, uh, people where people, the old age stay or the orphanages for children and, and that sort of thing, or even just in the community cleaning. So when we volunteer and do that, uh, that helps to promote um, a good, positive mental health. Then, then we have um, then then we have um, the fifth one, which which is um, this one, which is uh, to pay attention to the present moment. To pay attention to the present moment. It can improve our mental well-being. This includes our thoughts, our feelings, our body, how our body is, the, the world that is around us. And this can be done by what is called mindfulness. And mindfulness, um, my, mindfulness is generally um, the ability to be fully uh, uh, present and aware of where we are. For example, how aware am I of where I'm sitting now, what noises can I hear? What am I seeing? You know, that, that, that is mindfulness. Um, what am I doing probably like now with my hands? But if I st sit still, where are my hands? Being aware of myself, that is mind mindfulness. And it can positively change the way that one feels about life and how to approach the challenges. Um, we will move on to um, what is mental health issues prevention. Now we've finished about the 
promotion of, of mental health. So now what is the prevention? So mental health issues prevention is intervening to minimize. Remember that was to optimize positive uh, mental health. This is now to minimize mental health problems or mental health issues by addressing determinants of mental health problems before a specific mental health problem has been identified with the ultimate goal of reducing any future mental uh, health problems or health, health uh, issues. So we can optimize um, the positive mental health and we can minimize mental health problems. So before it happens, we can do it. Um, the first thing we do when we are preventing is to value ourselves. We must treat ourselves kindly and with respect and avoid self-criticism. It is something that many of us have to learn to do because we treat ourselves very roughly. We, we, we look at ourselves and feel that uh, we are not worthy of what we are doing. We are not worthy of what we have. And, and we criticize ourselves so harshly. And uh, that, that, that makes us not value ourselves the way we are. And that would easily cause some mental health issues. So we prevent by valuing ourselves. Then um, we need to make time for hobbies and favorite projects or broaden our horizon. Um, and they are listed here, some of the things we can do. Uh, fill crosswords, uh, plant a, a garden, take a dance lesson, like I was saying, play an instrument uh, and learn a lesson or generally do something that, that you love to do. Then take care of your body. To prevent, we need to take care of ourselves physically and uh, improve our mental health. One is simply to be sure we are eating well. Um, it is so easy to be so busy and to say in the morning, I'll just take my cup of tea and run or my cup of tea and bread and off I go. Uh, yet, yet that time we could, you can use it to make a smoothie or something to drink so that you have good food in the morning or good food during the day as you're going on. Avoid smoking and general use of drugs. We know that works on our mind and, and uh, brings us down because you are, you'll be on the high and then you'll be on the low, depending on what drugs that are being taken. Drink plenty of water. Water helps uh, us to move foods around our body. It helps us to, to have enough uh, fluid in our body, helps even the blood to move. So we need to drink enough water. We have to exercise. This helps uh, decrease depression. We know that it doesn't totally remove depression. If we get right into uh, a deep depression, but it will help us to prevent so that we don't get into that area of depression. So exercise helps to, to keep us going um, when, when we would have been depressed. And this helped a number of people during COVID. Uh, I know I'm one of them who got into walking and, and that helped because I was able to get out of the house, able to walk and where I would have been anxious about what's happening or be depressed because I'm in the same surrounding. That, that helped me get out of that situation that may have been um, a, a situation that would have taken me to uh, poor mental health. Then get enough sleep. Uh, it, it's been tested that when people sleep well, they wake up and they are more alert, they are able to work better, they, they, they are able to think better. But when you don't sleep well, you are tired, you, you are in fact uh, going towards being a bit in a very bad mood. And so if, you, if that is the order of the day for you and the order of the week for you, then you, you, you will tend to have a very bad mental uh, health, very poor mental health. Uh, the other one is the uh, how we surround, who we surround ourselves with. Uh, sometimes we surround ourselves with very negative people 
But if we surround ourselves with good people, people with strong family or social connections are generally healthier. That's what we're told. And when you don't, when you surround, your, surround yourself with people who are negative, who are criticizing you, who are talking negative about the nation, about your friends, about the church, about any group you're in, then this tends to bring you down. So make plans for yourself to have supportive people around and to withdraw from those who are negative. If you're with them, then try and, uh, and bring in that negative uh, uh, strength, negative power that, that, you can, uh, that you can bring into a, a family group, a family gathering, a gathering of friends. Um, <clears throat> then volunteer, give yourself to others acts of kindness. So volunteer, volunteer your time, volunteer uh, to help others. You, you will feel good, definitely. Like I said earlier, you will feel good when you're helping people and you're doing something that is touchable. You may not, uh, you may have lost your job. You may, you, may, you may not have gotten unemployment, but when you volunteer, and you go out to do some work that will help others, you then are able to uh, uh, prevent any mental health issues that may come in. Um, learn to, to deal with stress. Uh, stress is part of us. We get stressed, you're in a traffic jam, you're stressed, you're walking on the road, the, the vehicles are hooting at you and you don't have any other place to go to, you're stressed. A motorbike is coming behind you, and this is a, a walkway for people, and they are putting your stress. So they stress every time. Every time we are in life, they stress. But we need to practice some good coping skills. Some of them are just breathing exercises. Some of them are the mindfulness we talked about. Some of some some of them is is actually the uh, the walking that we do. So we can do a lot to remove this stress from us. And also realizing that there's nothing you can do about the person who is scooting at you or the, the motorbike person who is right behind you. Uh, and, and you don't need to shout, you don't need to, to, to fight back. So these, these are some ways of removing stress. And then quiet your mind. I've mentioned about mindfulness as we were doing the, the uh, promotion of uh, uh, positive mental health. And uh, here we, we say we can try to, uh, we can try meditating and of course mindfulness. And for those of us who are spiritual and read the word of God, meditating, just reading a passage and sitting under a tree and listening to what God is saying, that, that helps you to quiet your mind. And even prayer, when we get into a time of prayer, silent prayer, that helps with the quieting of the mind. And there are relaxation <coughs> exercises. <clears throat> I've just mentioned um, about the breathing exercises. You can, you can do a breathing exercises, breathe in, hold your breath, breathe out, uh, and, and do it several times. That helps to still your mind before you get into a session of doing something or just before you sleep, that will help. And that will improve the, the mental health and it can be used as a prevention. Um, then there is um, the setting realistic goals. You decide you want to achieve academically, professionally, and even personally, then write down the steps. You need to realize your goals, aim high, and be realistic. Do not overshadow. If you do this, you will enjoy a tremendous sense of accomplishment and self-worth as you progress towards your goal. And sometimes when we talk about such realistic goals, uh, let me talk about academically. Do you, as you want to do maybe a diploma course and you, have, uh, you know that's what you're going to do, but you have such a big workload that even doing that course may not be possible then the best thing is to set it and say, okay, I have this workload right now. How, how can I spread my workload so that I can bring in um, this diploma? And then you write the steps down and you see if there are steps that you can follow and then you can actually accomplish it. Or you want to write a book 
and you know the book you want to write, you have all the information, but you probably don't even know where to start. The starting point will be, yes, I can write this book. It's a book I have all the information. The starting point will be, how do I want to write this book? I want to write it chapter by chapter. How many days in a week do I want to <clears throat> sit down and write? Do I do it on a daily basis, one hour a day, or do I take um, two hours twice a day, twice a week, and, and write, and then accomplish my book? By the end of six months, my book will be out, and I can take it to the printers. So set realistic goals, goals that you can accomplish. Um, the other one is uh, to break monotony. And although our routines make us more efficient and enhance our feelings of security and safety, a little change of pace can pack up a tedious schedule. Alter your jogging route, plan a road trip, take a walk in a different park, hang some new pictures on or try a new restaurant. Um, I was talking about how during the COVID times I started walking and I would walk, but what we did with some of my friends, we would go once a week to a totally different route and walk, you know, for the three, four hours, and that would be for the week. And then you come back and you start the same, you know, the, the routine again, walking the same uh, place and go back and do a different thing. So, so that, that, that is a way of breaking uh, monotony. But they give us examples here. You know, if you like going to Guru Park, change, go to a different park. Go, 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 and, go and walk in a different forest so that you, you can have that change of monotony. It helps to prevent uh, poor mental health. Then avoid alcohol and other drugs. And I've mentioned this, that the alcohol, because of the way our brain is made, you, 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 you drink alcohol and it might give you, a, or another drug gives you a, um, a high, then you come low and then you go just too low. And you'll keep needing to use that alcohol or that drug to keep you on that high. When you don't use it, then you start having a very bad mental health. And that, 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 this is another way of uh, preventing by avoiding alcohol and other drugs. Get help when you need it. Um, seeking help is a sign of strength and not a weakness. Many of us think that going to see a counselor, going to join a, a, a group, maybe a self-help group is, is such a weakness. Why should I? I can struggle with this. I can read a book and understand what to do. I can uh, get a self-help book and, and I'll use it. But you need to seek help. If, it's good to seek help because when you go to talk to somebody, you're actually relieving yourself of the, the, what, you, what, you, what is holding you back. And um, when you get that appropriate help from a professional or from a, a, a group that is a self-help group, then uh, you, you recover well, even from a mental illness, even from... Uh, even you can even prevent that mental illness from happening and you recover well from any addiction as well. And it is very rewarding. So you, you, need, you need to get help so that you can move on. Um, and again, I'll give an example of myself. Uh, although I'm a counselor, I, I have decided that apart from my normal work and apart from getting supervision, like, I, like you seek, help for, from a doctor for a medical test uh, or a medical, a full medical exam. I do that once a year. I look for a counselor once a year and I go for my five sessions or so. Not that I have a problem, but that I just want to go and she can see what areas of my life uh, needs help. And because I've gone to the same person uh, several times, she now need, knows when she pulls out my records, she knows where to look for and what to discuss. And so this, these are some of the things that, uh, that you, we need to do for prevention. That you just see, seek help, go and talk to somebody, get a group of people, share with them in confidential, confidentially 
and um, and you will live a life that is now free of any mental illnesses. And even if they were there, they, you you will be able to get over them. Um, so we want to we just want to mention a few things that uh, of how we can uh, how this impacts how mental health impacts mediation. Uh, one is performance and productivity. The mediator, if you don't have good mental hygiene, then you will be distracted and not be able to listen and bring the parties together in a healthy way. If your mental hygiene is poor, then even engagement with the mediation work becomes challenging in that you may be lethargic and may quickly um, want to end the sessions because you are lethargic. Uh, physical capability and daily functioning, uh, one can feel excessively tired and thus sitting through a mediation becomes a great task. So when we are not mentally healthy and we have not kept ourselves, uh, washed our mental health, those are some of the things that we carry to a mediation. Yet, when, the, when we have good mental hygiene, then we can communicate well with the parties with better clarity, they will understand us, we shall be patient, we shall have good listening um, skills, and uh, then we have optimal performance and productivity. So, so, so when, when, when we have, um, when, when we have uh, mental, hygiene that is good, we relate to others in a very good way. Okay. Thinking of the pre, during, and after the elections in Kenya, um, one of the things we need to do is just to be conscious of what is happening around the country, because it will affect me and it will affect my client. It will affect you and your client. And we have to be conscious, that is mindfulness. Listen and know how is, how, is, how is so and so affecting me, assuming any one of the four presidential, election, uh, presidential candidates. Wherever they are and when they, they speak, how does it affect me? Does it make me angry? Do I feel, what do I feel when I hear them? Do I feel sad? Do I feel like um, I can lift up uh, a panga or something? Am I conscious about what's going on within me and around the country? We need to watch how the things happening in the country are affecting us. That's what I've just mentioned, our thoughts, our ways of doing things, how we relate to others, because you can, depending on that, you can even quickly get angry with your own siblings, with your spouse, with your children. And, 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 and you get to know that now, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, washing my hands. I'm not washing my mental health, you know? My hands are dirty. You know, your hands, you can easily see. Whereas our mental health, we can't see what's going on in our brain, but we can feel it. So that is when now we need to do the promotion and the prevention. So we must remember, very, very important that you and I are mediators and well-trained to be a go-between. We cannot take sides, or regardless of what we hear, when we get our clients, we do not take sides. We are, we are the ones who say, uh, we don't know both of you, but we are bringing you together. So we, we cannot be the ones who are going to uh, put people apart, but we are going to bring people together. So we must remember that, before, during, and after the elections, we must really be aware of what's happening. During that time, when I go to the queue, how am I feeling? What am I seeing around me? How about the people who are around me? Do they seem to be calm? After the elections, the results are coming in. What am I feeling? Uh, how do I want to react to what I'm seeing on the screen? These are very important things. 
And if we do what we have said above, we will, we will, uh, we will be able to prevent anything. And so mental health hygiene is important for us in order that we can help the parties that come together to reach an agreement. Mental hygiene uh, is uh, important for us in both, both promotion and prevention uh, to promote positive health, mental, productive, physical health, spiritual health, and just generally a holistic health. And I want to say thank you so much for, for coming in. Uh, and I hand back to Wangari if there are any questions for this session. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, mediator Patricia Ketch and our masterclass leader for the insightful session, the good coverage on our topic for today, which is on me and my mental health as part of the effective uh, mediator masterclass, specifically the wellness series on the, today on the 30th day of June in the year 2022. And uh, it's quite interesting that uh, we've been able to uh, run through this session because um, this topic that uh, we are going through is a topic is, is actually um, on a broader on a broader context of wellness, um, where the focus on wellness is so that we can enhance our well-being. That is, you know, the state of living for practitioners, and in turn, then their practice, their practice, and also positioning, which would have then has the ripple effects and evidence of benefits uh, back to the clients, specifically to the clients in client outcomes and the experiences. We are cognizant that um, well, th that the aspect of wellness is actually interlinked, interdependent, and it's, I mean, the elements, they actually influence each other, mental, physical, social, financial, spiritual, environmental, vocational, and the focus on um, this particular series on the mental uh, wellness is because we see it as a foundational for you, uh, for me as a mediator, so that then we can give our clients better outcomes um, and they can also have better experiences because we ourselves, we have better experiences with ourselves. And uh, I really thank you, mediator Patricia Ketch, because yeah, you've elaborated to us just how mental hygiene um, can help us to improve the quality of our lives, um, uh, our uh, private mediation practice and also the client experiences, which is the goals um, of this particular discussion. Um, what's quite interesting is, um, uh, I find quite interesting is uh, what one of the statements that you've given that uh, remember that you are a mediator and well trained to be a go-between, um, specifically because this particular session, the, the aim um, is was to focus and just to orient us around uh, the election in Kenya, which is scheduled uh, for the month of August that we have a responsibility as mediators to be the go-between, whether it is before the elections, during the elections, and after the elections, and the potentiality or our capacity to be able to do this is influenced by our mental hygiene. The other thing that I find uh, um, quite interesting is that uh, um, when you talked about the fact that uh, it's about promotion and prevention, in the context of being able to optimize health and to minimize the issues. I think in an election year, the frenzy, the energy that is normally um, around can sometimes, uh, one way or the other, sometimes lead to different interpretations by different people. And so it's important that uh, even in advance that there is consciousness, and especially for us as practitioners, whether we will deal with any matters that have to do with elections, or even if you're dealing with um, a family matter or a commercial matter, we are conscious of the things that are around the country, how they're affecting us, and also how they're affecting um, the people um, who are around us. And I, I believe that um, um, a key emphasis and a key takeaway in um, this particular message for today is that we, we have the ability to manage our stress hormone or cortisol the levels of cortisol, the stress hormones, which is actually uh, a key factor around um, uh, mental hygiene. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a research that was done in 2016, and it talked about just that, just taking time 
it just as you probably you talked about that you know someone taking time whether it's in the morning or uh, during the, uh, during the day at some point in time that just that taking time can be, enable us to take charge of our cortisol um, levels even throughout the day. What occurs for me is um, an illustration that probably I, I think that is um, um, a bit more, um, let me say clear or would come clearly for me now is um, the example of a vehicle in the morning when before the owner or uh, starts going out with it. And um, I, I seem to remember there, there, there is a, there's a Citroen and also there are models of, of cars which um, when, it, when it is in um, relaxation mode, it goes down. And it actually goes down and even can like literally that, you know, the tires go down and the vehicle can actually like sit, it's like it's sitting on the ground. And then when it's now time to go and ignition, it's ignited and the ignition is put on, then the vehicle rises up. I think that's the um, illustration that I can see in terms of as um, 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 a mental hygiene practice that can be adaptable because um, as human beings, then you know we, we, we can develop tools or practices that we can journey with, then they can enable us to be able to have better um, hygiene. If it's physical hygiene, then we would now say, okay, yes, then now the person wakes up and before they go out, they now go and have a bath or a shower. That's a personal hygiene practice. So in the area of uh, mental hygiene, then just as the, uh, uh, the vehicle, you know, uh, that uh, is in rest mode and now is coming up, about the 20 or 15 minutes of just personal time to, to reflect. I, yeah, I know you talked about meditation uh, practices, and that is now when someone can be able to be able to take their Bible, to be able to go through it, to just sit in the calm and quietness. It's quite um, a tall order. Um, or at, at all call because that is a time when maybe everyone is being woken up in the house and you know it's time for putting the kids together or preparing uh, everyone and I think the call for us then as mediators is if everyone is up at five then you're up 15 minutes before everyone else so that then you now have the 15 or 20 minutes to be able to now have your time to be able to swell in I can probably see it as swelling in now with you know um, just uh, time alone and swelling in so that you have your, you can, it's like putting in the peace in uh, myself or in yourself um, to start the day. And then I think the other practice then would now be just as the vehicle that now comes down after when it's in rest mode is now how we also ourselves um, after a morning of uh, inflating, you know, inflating ourselves just like a tire, then during the day, you know, the day has its activities, then when it now comes to uh, the end of the day, that now we can decompress. Just as the tire, the vehicle, the tires go down, then decompress or like deflating um, um, of, of, of the tires. And yet again, it's still time to be able to sit. Um, you talked about journaling. Um, I believe that's a practice that um, many of us actually need um, training in or a support structure so that we can be able to be accountable through it because it has its own uh, benefits to be able to just journal through the day as, as a way of, you know, let, uh, yeah, let of, 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 of decompressing and, and, and let, letting go. Um, yes, uh, you did also talk to us with regards to uh, being, being uh, able to seek for um, or to have a, a practice of just as with uh, physical health as we go like for a wellness clinic to go for you know a mental um, as, as part of our my mental hygiene toolkit to be going for yes um, 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 uh, uh, a therapeutic session um, depending on how we feel ourselves or even as a routine annually or um, every 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 so often so yes I hear from you that we have been able to take away some uh, practices that we can put in our toolkit um, you also talked about breathing. And at this point, then, I mean, we, we actually, when we were running the facilitation and um, training development skills, we actually uh, were started off uh, the briefing, uh, briefing as exercise, briefing exercise as part of um, our session. And we'll also be, run, be having one with ourselves today. And that is, is actually a practice that one is able to have as a tool anywhere, anytime. As you've said, a vehicle or someone is passing you and, you know, about to, you know, they, they, they knock you off. You can actually take a breather before you even act or uh, be, um, uh, respond, and that will probably change even the setting. 
um, in itself. So I believe that uh, we have been able to gain and gather a lot uh, from uh, uh, this particular session. Um, yes, as, I, as, as, as I've said, I think what I really, really get from this is um, inflate and then decompress and throughout the day be able to have those moments of being able to breathe in, breathe out and just adopt the practices. And especially during this period of the elections, when election in Kenya, when we have, yes, the camps, we have camps and we are part of the Kenyans who will or may be voting or will participate or not participate, but will be impacted uh, by the, uh, the elections as, 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 as they do go on. So I wish to thank you, Mediator Patricia Ketch, for uh, this particular session. I, allow me to, uh, let me invite you for your one minute closing statement, then uh, we can be able to have the national anthem and uh, close the session. Mediator Patricia. Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much, Wangari. I see you've captured it well. And for all mediators, all I can say is we really need to continue doing this mental hygiene. You know, like we've said, wash your hands, wash your mind, wash your body, wash, do, do it on a daily basis. Because if we do it on a daily basis, it becomes part of us. Like, like I mentioned COVID, we knew we had to wash our hands every morning. Every time we left the house, came back, we were washing our hands. Getting into the car, we were cleaning our hands. The same thing is what we should do with our minds during the day. And the breathing exercises are very simple. The, the mindfulness is something you can do anywhere. So um, let's, let's go ahead and do it for our own good as we interact with our clients. Thank you very much. So Asante Sana, Mediator Patricia Ketch, we uh, thank all the, partic the, the participants and also be able to listen into this particular recording. We are grateful, uh, Mediator Patricia Ketch, for uh, your taking the time to yeah, journey with us uh, in this particular conversation, as we also still look forward to other sessions, which we will be able to have in the My Wellness um, series. Um, as part of the effective um, uh, mediator masterclass series as, a master, as, uh, as our masterclass leader in this uh, particular uh, segment. So with that, we can close with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem. And so before that, where you are, we can have our breather, just where you are. And uh, our breather is a very simple one. It's actually a goodwill message that we send, uh, we send out. So we will breathe in and hold for the uh, yeah, six seconds and then we can Breathe in, you breathe in. Yeah, breathe in now as usual with your nose. And then now we breathe out with our mouth and release it out. So we'll hold for six seconds. And when we are breathing in, we are wishing everyone who's on this call well. So we can go, let's breathe in. Five, four, three, two, one, breathe out. So we can wish everyone else who's not here with us well, where they are. So let's go again, breathe in. Four, three, two, one, breathe out. So with that, I thank you once again for joining us and wish you a good day. We will conclude with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem, Wibo wa Taifa Kwa Luga Ya Kiswahili. E mungu nguvietu. Ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Once again, I thank you for joining us uh, today on the Effective Masterclass, uh, Effective Mediator Masterclass series today on my wellness, and specifically on the topic of my me and my mental hygiene on the 30th day of July, the year 2022. Asante sana and God bless you and keep you well. Goodbye.